Thank you, everybody. Um, our next speaker, I am so delighted to invite him to the stage to speak to you, Jeff Russell Jones. Some of you may have met Jeff because you may be supported by Leather Sellers, but Jeff is the Charities and Education offer, Officer at the Leather Sellers Company. Leather Sellers, I believe, are one of the most enlightened livery companies, and I can assure you that any of the tips that Jeff will give you today are worth their weight in gold. So I am really pleased to welcome to the stage Jeff Russell Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Pauline. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to come in front of the mic, oh. in front of the lectern here. Um, okay. Yep. Can you not hear me? Yep. Good. <laughs> um, good afternoon, everyone. It's okay. I'm mic'd up here. It's okay. good. Um, as uh, Pauline said, I'm Jeff Russell Jones from Leather Sellers Company, and I've been given the task of speaking on behalf of all trusts, foundations, and livery companies, um, which is quite a feat, because we're all pretty unique. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute. So I hope to give you a little insight into what I'm going to do. But um, first of all, I want to, of course, thank um, the Goldsmiths for inviting us into these outrageously beautiful um, halls. I mean, it's really fantastic. Um, and of course, the FSI for organizing this whole event and everything they're doing. Um, it's really special what the FSI are doing because obviously I give money, but money is not enough. Um, you have to know clearly what, what you're going to do with it, where to get more of it, uh, how to make best use of it. And the FSI is really the perfect partnership for a trust and foundation because we know that they're going to help you make the most out of the money that we give forward. I mean, it's the biggest fear we have as givers is that that money is given out, it's spent and go, and it's gone. And it's almost like, like pocket money. Next week, you're, you're back there with an empty hand looking for more. The best thing you can ever say to a uh, Trussell Foundation is thank you for your, however, you know, thousand pounds. That made me get two thousand pounds, or that helped me sustain this role, or this drew in another funder who then gave us twenty thousand pounds. It's about making money, um, and you know, Pauline and her team do an excellent job of that. It, it's really the analogy of you know, give a man a fish, he eats for the day, or teach him to fish, and hopefully he can feed himself and his family forever. You know, it's that key, and I'm not sure if I'm the fish, or I give the fish, or Pauline's the rod, or I, I, but, but it works. So, you know, really, it's a brilliant job, and we're, we're well behind everything they do. Um, but particularly, thank you for inviting me to speak to you lot, because, you know, to a certain extent, I, I live in a bit of a bubble. Um, obviously, I hear from many of you, and we, you know, we correspond and phone. Uh, sometimes I meet a few of you, but there's very little opportunity to give feedback. When it comes down to it, you are what it's all about. You're the important people. You know, you're the ones who have got this drive and passion to achieve what you want to, which is, you know, almost all accounts, helping others. Um, all I can do is give you money, you know, that, which, which isn't a very clever thing. Um, you're the ones that are actually, you know, devoting your work life and for many of you, your personal lives as well for something you really do believe in. Um, and when you think about sort of the power and energy and focus that's in this room, if all of you got to have your dream of what it is you, you need to take your charity the next stage or just fulfill what you really want to do, that'd be an amazing amount of good that could be done. Um, so, obviously, the, the more I can help you do that, and people like Pauline help you to do that, the better. Um, and, yeah, clearly, I have a great job. I don't have to sell anything. What I get to do is meet people like you um, and understand the passion that you're feeling and believe in what you believe in. And then I get to do something about it make that happen, make those dreams happen, which is really good. But again, it only starts with yourselves. Um, so, you know, how can I help you in these goals? I'm aware that charities are bombarded with 
um, workshops, seminars, conferences, books, CDs, websites, huge amount of stuff. For some reason, I get sent this stuff as well. So it's bizarre to go looking through it. And it makes, makes my head spin. You could spend, I'm sure, your entire working day, week at some conference or another, or reading some book. And you could probably spend your entire budgets on these things as well. So where do you turn for that sort of help? Um, yeah, I'm not going to pretend that there's some secret formula, because there's not. There's no magic bullet. Um, there's nothing you can say which you run up to an organization, tell them that, and it'll work. You know, any more as you could, in, in the dating game, say someone will, you know, whisper this in someone's ear, and they'll fall madly in love with you. It's, you know, it's wrong. It doesn't exist. But that's the same sort of attitude. It's just about getting your own message across. So what I'm hoping to do is give you a small insight into my world, what I go through dealing with the likes of yourselves, um, in the hope that that will inform the way you approach us um, and create a better success rate. By the end of this, even perhaps halfway through or even within the next five minutes, a few of you are going to be sitting back thinking, these are all pretty damn obvious points. But that's the point. It's really obvious. So I'd say, I mean, I was trying to look for a statistic of this. Um, maybe 70% of all the ap applications that don't make it, it's down to some really simple, obvious point. That, you know, when you know, you'd be like, God, how did I not think of that? Um, or why did I not check that? So excuse me if it sounds like I'm teaching you how to suck eggs. Um, it's not meant to be you know, the, the simple version, but it's having spoken to a lot of my colleagues and other trusts and foundations, what I'm going to say, this is what's coming from them and myself. Um, you know, and with that, I'll put in a disclaimer that I have no qualifications in um, oh, just about anything, but in, uh, pr primarily in fundraising or that whole aspect. This is just coming from personal experience. So take that as you wish. And um, hopefully if I get the nod at the right time, and there'll be time for a bit of Q&A afterwards where you can draw me over the coals. So first thing, first contact. Um, using the date dating analogy, probably the most important thing. Um, if that's in your mind, you're going to make your first impressions of someone you know, instantly, within the first few moments of meeting them or hearing, them, hearing about them. So if you're going to approach us, think about how you're going to do it. Um, do your research first. We all have websites. Go on the website. Find out about us. What do we like to fund? What do we not fund? Go to the Charity Commission. You'll find our accounts there. Loads of information. You'll be able to make sure you're writing to the right person, that you'll see who other people we funded. Um, and that can at least make you decide whether you want to get in contact with us. And you may want to pick up the phone and call. Um, this could be a good thing. It could be a pretty disastrous thing. Um, make sure you know why you're phoning me. It's not that I don't want to hear from you, but um, let me paraphrase a little phone conversation that I get. Um, I get one of these, which bears a striking resemblance to this conversation, that once a week. So get in the office, phone rings, morning, leather sellers company, hi, is that Barbara? Okay, no. Not even at the weekend. Uh, Barbara was not my predecessor. She was my predecessor's predecessor. And she retired about 12 years ago. You know, whatever book or journal you're getting your information from, change it. Update your database. Um, so we get over that. Yeah, I know that um, you fund this and that you are very... And, and, proceeds to basically read me the front page of our accounts. Okay, good, you've read those. Um, and you know, I interject at some point and go, look, look, have you visited our websites? All our information's on there. Have you gone to our website? Yes, I'm reading it now. Okay. Um, and they then proceed to read me my website. Um, and, you know, well, what I really want to ask is, um, you know, how do I apply? Oh, right, I see. That's how you apply. Yes, that's how you apply. Just click on the button. It's amazing the number of... You think I'm crazy. I, I'm often driven to it. But the main number of people that will phone up and in that way just read that out to us. Um, and will read me my website. And then after about five minutes, 
comes the classic line of, I hope you don't mind me phoning. It's, um, I didn't want to waste your time, so I thought I'd call instead. <laughs> Too late. You have. By the way, let me take your name so I remember it for later. <laughs> Not a good first impression. Um, you know, do your research. How valid is your question? If it's a matter of opinion, isn't there someone in your office you can ask? Do you think this is a right answer? What do you think to this? What do you think this question means? You know, ask, ask other people. They've, they'll give you a good opinion. But, you know, you might just come across not that well. Um, but that's not to say all phone calls are wrong. Um, you know, we do appreciate hearing from you. Um, you know, it's a real good, quick way to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm whoever. I've just about to put this application in. Is that fine? Boom, bang, done. Great. You planted a little seed in my head. And, you know, maybe I'll remember your name, and then when it comes through, oh, yeah, I remember that. Maybe there's a longer conversation to be had, an intelligent conversation. Great, I love intelligent conversations. If you can handle it, great, give me intelligent conversation. Um, there's also, so, yeah, phone, but make it important. Um, personal contact as well. Um, I do get around, we all do, we... Um, you know, out most evenings at some event or another, um, we go there because we're wanting to meet people like you. Um, hear about what's going on, maybe check up on you, yes, but it's a good opportunity to also put a face to a name. Um, so if you spot us, come and talk. You know, don't be shy. Don't be too over the top, if we're using that dating analogy. Same sort of thing. You know, if you're too over the top, don't scare people away. Um, but it's good to just say, hi, do you remember me? Or I've just put, I think someone did it today. It's like, um, you know, I've just put an application into you. Great, okay. That's going to remember. And, you know, that's just going to stick in the back of my head next time I see the application. I hope it's good, <laughs> wherever you are. Um, so, yeah, don't be shy. You know, make, you know, make contact. It's all about personal personalities. You know, we're personable people. You know, let's break down the barriers. Um, so, right, you've decided you're going to apply. You found us, we're a good fit, you've done your research, you're going to apply. Um, don't fall at the first hurdle. How have we asked you to apply? How do we like our applications? Is it by letter? Is it online? If it's online, apply online. If it's by letter, apply letter. We, st we moved to completely online applications what, th four years ago, and still this amount of post every week of people sending us stuff in. What a waste of a stamp. What a waste of whatever it was you sent me, because it's not going anywhere. You know, apply online. Um, a, lot of app, a lot of charities, uh, trusts, do like their paper applications, which is absolutely fine. Um, and a lot of what I'm saying is fed back from those now. Um, so I've got the, like, the top five um, big issues, big ways to find yourself in the dustbin or rejected, you know, to put it slightly nicer. nicer. Um, first of all, in number five, incomplete applications. Seems like a no-brainer, but um, one charity came back to me, half of everything they receive is incomplete. What's the point? You, you didn't finish the application. Finish it. Answer every question. Even if they're not all mandatory, they, that question was put there to help you get your message across. So fill it. You know. And if you're really stumped and you don't, want to, don't know what to put in there, well, maybe pick up the phone and ask me. You know, and then we'll, we'll tell you what to put in that hole. Um, number two, incorrect, well, not number two, sorry, number four, going the other way, incorrect um, contact details. This is a big issue. Now, some charities, some, some foundations I know, I think it's a bit harsh. If, they've got the wrong per if it's addressed to the wrong person, go straight in the bin. They're not interested. They're looking to cut them down. Uh, to me, that's a bit harsh, but again, it sets the wrong impression. If this is first impressions and you call me Barbara, it's not good, whether it's over the phone or you know, by a letter. Um, but keeping with the correct, um, you know, making, having your contact details correct and everything like that, another point that I have come into contact with is stick a stamp on it. Yep, we get those. We, we, we don't get your applications or your annual reports. We get the little card from the post office saying, please, is that so, is a guilty party over there? Um, um, th yeah. I just can't believe that people do 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't worry, I, I've got a classic coming for you in a minute. Um, well, it's, it, they turned out nicely, but um, put a stamp on it. Um, yeah, God, because they just put a stamp on it. <laughs> okay, uh, number three, blanket appeals. Okay, now this is where um, perhaps part of what you do is um, appeals to individuals and you might be sending them gift aid forms, or stickers, or fluffy bookmarks, or you know, the letters with photographs all over them and everything. I'm not an individual. I don't want it. We don't want it. It just goes in the bin. You know, we're a trust. We're not an individual. Don't send us that stuff. If we're in our database, section us out somehow so you don't send us that stuff because, first of all, it's not going to do anything. Second of all, it must have cost something to send that and put that all together. Don't do it. Um, number two is the lazy letter. And this is where, um, again, you s we will get... Um, God, I'm really accusatory. I'm like the headmaster here. Okay, but... Yeah. Um, Wait, wait, wait. Send, perhaps you'll send us a copy of your accounts and your annual accounts and a newsletter with a little comp slip saying, if you're interested in us, get in touch. <laughs> no, we won't. And you, and P, not you, but the collective you do this all the time to all of us. We get it. And with those, obviously with ourselves, we don't deal with paper. It goes in the bin straight away. Um, for those that do do it with paper, it is frustrating because they say, well, we needed their accounts, we needed a newsletter, comp slip is nice, but if they had just given it a bit more effort and written a covering letter, bang, they've got an application in. As it is, they're feeding the bin. Really simple things. You know, don't send the stuff out just for the sake of it. And then um, number one in you know, the evil of all evils, mail merge. Don't do it. It doesn't work. It's horrible. It's, if you can't be bothered to write me an individual letter, why should I be bothered to read it? It's just not worthwhile. Um, mail merge is good for certain things, I'm sure, but not for when you're trying to impress a foundation that you're hopefully get, wanting to get thousands of thousands of pounds from. It's just not going to work. Um, and most of the time, they don't work. You know, and all they do is give us a nice chuckle when, you know, obviously, as you've understood, they refer to me as not Barbara, but now Susan, who works at the inholders, and then refers to, you know, we think the Mercers would be a perfect match for this application. Great, write to them, not to me. It, you know, it's really not worth it. Um, you know, all it does, it, it gives us a laugh. And there may be there are a few of you thinking, ah, I'm really good with my mail merges. You know, you won't spot them. You know, that's the, that, that's the equivalent of the schoolboy who's nipping out behind the bike sheds for a crafty little smoke, then pops a polo in his mouth, not realising he reeks of smoke. <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's not worth it. Don't do it. If you're going to... You, you've only got one shot to approach us. Do it right. So... You've got past those hurdles. We've actually got a real application in front of us now. This is it. We're, we're going to read it. We're going to consider it. And I titled this bit, Selling Yourself to One Person. But actually, I got that wrong. It's not selling, because we're not buying anything off you. It's actually making one person believe in you. That's what it's about. It's, it's communicating, putting me in, in your shoes, making me want to do what you're doing, but I can't, so instead I'll give you the money to do it instead. That's the key. So who are you talking to? Um, it's really important to just have a little th think about that um, because that's going to determine th the level of what you're asking for. You know, if we don't give a lot of money, don't ask for £50,000. Um, and the level of your pitch, the, the language involved and the detail that you use is the charity that you're applying to. Do, all they fund is young people. So, you know, you're going to use more young people-focused language, but then you're not going to spend waste your time telling them what a young person is. Um, explain and describe what you're doing using normal, everyday words. Um, you know, I want to fund a real person that is helping real people. 
Um, I'm a real person. I'm hoping you're a real person too. So speak to me like real people. Don't use nonsense words. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, I'm blending into my other point in a minute, but th the other thing I must say is don't forget your grammar and punctuation. I'm back to the headmaster now, aren't I? <laughs> don't forget your grammar and your punctuation, okay? Um, you're not James Joyce on one sort of what, stream of consciousness, but most of the applications, well, most, but a huge number of the applications we get are like that. You know, it's just one stream of consciousness, just flying out, everything. Let me breathe. Put a full stop in there. You know, phrase it. You know, think more Dickens than James Joyce. It, and, and it will work. Um, you know, you, you're selling ourselves. Make it, um, you know, make it real. Um, and it, it comes to, you know, this big point, which is don't talk, don't talk nonsense. Um, you probably realize what other word I've put down there. <laughs> don't do it. Um, th these words, using endless descriptive and emotive words to describe what you're doing without actually telling me what the hell it is you do. You know, and it's used again and again. It's... Uh, when I first got into this game, I used to refer to it as Blair speak. Um, and it's basically where, you know, you've heard someone use these words, and you thought, oh, he looked really good doing that, and he sounded great, and I believed him, I'll use those words. And then they get used, and they, they, they lose their meaning. Once, perhaps, they had a meaning, but that's gone now. You know, does what you're saying make sense? Would you speak to your boyfriend with those words? You know, or your girlfriend, would you say those words? Probably not. Um, yes, I have some examples. <laughs> now, there's a £100,000 grant to the first person that can tell me what this means. <laughs> this, these are direct quotes uh, taken mid-sentence to tackle disadvantage and social exclusion by empowering hard-to-reach stakeholders with the resources requisite to develop their capacity to fulfill their human potential. Um, it's, it's one of them. Um, and, and, and there's, there's, there's another one which, perhaps with a little better grammar, um, please forgive me if you're in the audience. <laughs> Helping young children and adults who are excluded in society to become good citizens with the aim of providing an environment which provides long, long, long life learning through educational activities, reducing physical risks and dangerous dangers to venerable people through advice, encourages social interaction, recreational and work settings, through training, pro promoting intellectual, physical and emotional expression through provision of activities and thus improving mental health and the well-being of the community. <laughs> would you give them, would you text them? <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Um, it's, don't use it. Just speak to me straight. And do you know how refreshing it is when someone talks to you straight. Uh, one of the best application headlines I ever saw for project title was the desperate need to find money to replace our clapped out photocopier. Brilliant, <laughs> understood it, got it. Um, so, you know, and there's, there, there are, I have other bits here which I just quickly want to touch on because perhaps once they meant something, but they don't, they've lost their point now. Um, and I'm sure all of you have used most of these, probably. Service user. Service user? You mean like a child? Or, you know, uh, an elderly person? You know, use child or elderly person or, you know, service user. It's, it's, it's so antiseptic. Um, and what we keep hearing, these are three things we get in every application. The most disadvantaged members of society, in the top 10 of the most deprived world wards, and pockets of deprivation. Now, how many of you have used those? <laughs> Don't, uh, I won't invest. But it, they're, they're things that, we, that keep getting used again and again, and it's, they're kind of losing their impact. So be imaginative. Use normal words. Um, right, now, other questions to ask yourself when you're right, composing like the bulk of what, you, what you're trying to get across to me, your descriptions. Um, are you writing an essay or an article or a thesis? 
Um, and the, by that, I mean, are you starting to quote reference books or various speakers or bits of government research and things like that? that that's great, but it's, 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 not, it's pointless, really. It, it's not necessary. I'm not scoring you. I'm not going to give you a grade on this. I'm just trying to understand you. So again, talk to me like a normal person. You don't have to reference whoever and whatever. You know, talk to me about what you're doing. Um, and it goes on to my next point about telling me something I already know or that everyone knows. Be careful that you don't fall into the trap of just going on about the situation. So let's say autism. Um, we fund a lot of autism. We have done in the past. You don't need to spend a quarter of your application telling me what autism is. Okay, I know. Um, equally, you don't want to spend a large part of your application telling, talking about all the problems with autism. Tell me what you're doing in relation to autism, not just the big picture. I mean, someone gave a great um, application. They were talking about a certain part of London, and you know, they made it sound awful and horrible and everything. I was like, God, I totally agree with you. That place is a hole, and it needs help. But I, I don't believe you're the right person to deliver that help, because you haven't said anything about what you can do. Don't, you know, don't get dragged off into that. Um, and lists. If you find yourself writing ETC, stop, OK? It, again, it, it, it doesn't matter. You probably got the message across within the first few examples um, of what you, whatever you were trying to say. And you know, some, some, some of the applications, they come across, and it's like, we help old people. We help young people. We help middle-aged people. We help black people. We help white people. We help Asian people. We help, you get my point? They help everyone. Great, OK, so you help everyone. And you do everything. It's like, well, really? In equal measure? You know, focus, focus, focus on what it is. You know, we do, we, we're a community center. We're there for everyone, yes. But we want to focus on these people, something like that. Um, and is it relevant? Are the points you're making relevant? Um, this one was, uh, it's come up a few points. Uh, it's it, it softened now. It, it, but they used to, it was the whole Blair speak thing and everything. But there was a time where every application had the word multicultural in it. Um, as if it, it, you're going to get a tick point for that. And you know, in some cases, really important if it's dealing with a particular issue. But when the issue has got nothing to do with the color of someone's skin, then why bring it up? You know, if, if you're talking about bringing relief for an Alzheimer's sufferer, and you're like, yeah, this is you know, really important, and then you know, and I'm speaking from an actual example. I've, I've changed names, faces, places, and everything, not to embarrass anyone. But you know, I was really sold on this charity, and it was a, you know, they were really doing it for us. It was a face-to-face -face meeting. I was, right, everyone was, the whole panel right behind it. And then right at the last moment, um, the per, you know, the, I think the CEO turned around and said, oh, and you can be sure that um, all your funding will be directed to the BME community. And I was like, but we're talking about Alzheimer's. Or it wasn't, but it was, it was something else. But it's basically something where it, it shows no difference. It doesn't matter. You know, death comes to all, regardless of what co color your skin is. Why bring that up? What was that point? Um, and the bizarre thing was that for the whole discussion, we'd been given a case study of one of these people they wanted to help. And I just, I didn't know. I just turned around and said, oh, by the way, um, what color was the person, you know, this, this Susan, this case study? He said, white. <laughs> OK, so your whole pitch has just been you know, disowned. But you know, we wouldn't fund this person. So why bring it up? And to be honest, we, we ended up funding the charity. But it, it, it was just a really odd thing to say, as if you thought it would score brownie points. You know, is it relevant? You know, only use the points if they are relevant. Um, how am I doing on time? Am I OK? Oh, gosh, really? Right. Oh, my God. I told them you couldn't stop me talking. Right, OK, I'm going to go faster now. Um, finance, really important. One of the most as important aspects of, um, is your finance. Finance. Know your figures. Read your accounts, because I will. 
okay? Make sure that the accounts, account figures that you quote in your application actually match the ones in your annual accounts on the charity website, okay? Explain any discrepancies if they are there. Um, don't ask me how much you should apply for. Work it out yourself. Um, as a ratio of your income, if you've got a £25,000 turnover, I'm not going to give you £20,000. Um, as a ratio of your project, total project cost, some people like to fund the whole thing, some don't. Work that out. Um, and in relation to other grants, we give and you receive. If, you've, if, you get, if you tend to draw in five, ten grand or something, why are you going for a hundred grand? If we only give five or ten grand, why are you asking us for a hundred grand? Simple little things like that. Um, and your budget. Your budget doesn't have to be really mad and huge. And th uh, There was a quote I was actually given, best quote I ever received, where application that was gone through to the next stage, sent through the uh, budget, and he said, but the project budget is actually very simple, and I resisted the temptation to overcomplicate it. Brilliant. That's what you do. Just give us the plain figures, send them in to us, and we'll work it. If we've got questions, we'll ask you about it. But what is the single biggest deal breaker in any application as far as finance? Now, half of you are not going to want to hear this. Hmm? No. <laughs> Actually, that gets you bonus points sometimes, but no. Um, how much do you spend on fundraising? Um, it's the biggest deal breaker. We've had some excellent um, charities. There was one, I was, knew it was applying to us, it applied to us, it was looking good. Um, they invited us to uh, a lavish uh, reception at Mansion House. Of course, first thing I ask, who's paying for this? Not them. Great, no worries. More champagne, please. Um, all great, but... Actually, I'm going to throw this out to you. How much, as a percentage of your income, what do you think is the right amount to be spending on fundraising? Shout out some things. What's that? Okay. Someone else? Louder. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, and most of the charities of trust we're working with, it's about 15%. Okay. Um, if you can do it less than that, great. If you're hitting 25, you might be hitting a brick wall. Now, that's not a complete, you know, showstopper. If you can explain it, some charities are made up differently, and what is lumped into their fundraising total is actually also a huge amount of PR and other stuff like that. You know, maybe they do a lot of big events, so it's not a complete killer. But you've, if your fundraising costs are 20% upwards, you've got to be ready to explain it um, because it will stop you dead. And we've had uh, just a few uh, charities that we've just had, and their fundraising was going up, their income was going down. Um, I had one on the phone just that we just turned down, and you know the guy phoned me up. I was like, "What went wrong?" And I was like, "Well, there's this and this." But to be honest, the killer was, you know, you're at 33 percent of your income is spent on fundraising. Yeah, well, we've just invested in two new full-time fundraisers so we can reverse you know, our drop in income. That's not the way to do it. You know, I know, I mean, that, I've seen a f number of charities hit the dirt because they thought the way to go, get a bunch of professional fundraisers in and our, and our problems will be solved, and it didn't work out that way. Um, as a little addition onto that, one of the things we were talking about this among some of the other tr uh, trusts and foundations, and, um, you know, they said, this came from, uh, I won't say who, but anyway, they said that professional fan fundraisers can lack passion and depth of knowledge. In many respects, where we have funded an application from a professional fundraiser, we would have probably funded that charity anyway. Okay, there's certain things they can do. I've got some very good friends who are professional fundraisers, but sometimes it's not the right match with, the, with a certain charity. So be careful on that. Um, meetings. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. How am I, I'm going to... This is me going fast. Okay. Meetings. This is the holy grail. Okay. So I never get to meet these people. You can have another five minutes. I've got another five minutes. Thank you. You can have another... <laughs> 
um, meetings. This is really the holy grail is when we get in front of you. Because as far as we're concerned, that's when we really get a true picture of what it's like to be you, what it's like to uh, fund what you're doing. Um, so if we come to you, show us around, introduce us to people. Don't just bring us in the back door, lock us in an office and out the other side. You know, introduce us to people, anyone. We want to see, we came there. Um, no need for flags and bunting and bells and whatever, but just, you know, show us round. Having said that, uh, do not underestimate the power of a good biscuit. <laughs> and a decent cup of tea, for that matter. Um, who do we want to meet? We want to meet the CEO. We want to meet the project leader. We want to meet maybe a chair or beneficiary of what you're doing. That's all great. Who didn't I mention in that? The fundraisers. Yeah. Um, good if you're in the room, but you've done your job. If you've got us in the room, you've done your job. Good to be in the room to keep your CEO on task, but, you know, be just in the background to, you know, let them do, we're there to see them, yeah? Um, and it's nothing against you, but that, you've done your job. Let them ride it now, because they're the ones that can be taking it from there. Um, and that is another issue. If we've invited you in for a meeting, you know, make sure one of those people can turn up. Um, again, that same charity that had the 33%. You know, we had three of our trustees and myself at this meeting. They sent us two fundraisers. Okay, so you're, you're really into this. Um, how? What should you do? Intro, four-minute pitch. Obviously, don't waffle on and on and on like some people. Um, really, four-minute pitch. Bang, just give us a thing, and then let's get into discussion. PowerPoint, don't... Are you sure? Are you really sure about PowerPoint? You might have noticed I don't use it. It's evil. It's, it, it's, it switches you off. You know, if you ever, you know, next time you're in a thing with, oh, God, might be in about 10 minutes, with people with PowerPoint, you know, people tend to, you know, it, you can switch off. You know, you're looking down, you're looking there. You, it's, you don't want people switching off when you're pitching for, you know, your, your livelihoods, essentially. Um, and it stops people asking questions. Um, don't, you know, don't use PowerPoint unless they really ask for it. You know, and it's really not necessary. Um, and then also bring with you your latest accounts and funding updates and things like that. And I'm going to have a word about BUMPF. Got to talk to you about BUMPF. What does your BUMPF say about you? Okay? Because quite often when we're in these positions, people go, oh, and here's some stuff to leave with. Here's your BUMPF. Um, first question, who's paying for this? Will we be paying for this if we give you a grant? Um, so you've got to have that answer. If you're giving people bump, who's paying for it? At which point you go, we've got a great deal with a um, printer. They do it all for free. Good answer, best answer. Um, who is reading this or watching it? If it's DVDs in their own little uh, cases, who's using it? You know, the little fluffy bookmarks and the key rings and the mouse mats and whatnot. Really necessary? Um, and is it, it might be necessary, but do you need to be handing it out, especially to people like us who are essentially paying for it? Um, do you need the hard copies? Can you not go online? Can they not go online and download it all? Um, important thing, and you know, obviously the cost of it is essential. Last page. Okay. Um, you've done it. You've got your money. Yay! First thing you do? Thank you letter. Amazing how many people do not say thank you. It doesn't take much. It's a simple thank you. Of course, acknowledge the payment as well. But and I'm not saying a thank you letter is something from your finance department saying payment received, boom. A thank you letter. Yeah? It doesn't have to, have to be handwritten. It's up to you. Some people send cards. Some people write. Some people email. A real honest email is a joy to receive. Um, that woman with the photocopier. You know, the expletive written written email I got from her was wonderful. I, I don't even know. I, I think I might have even... Yeah, um, you know, it, it's just full of expletives here. I just got your letter and your check. Um, <laughs> the <clears throat> blooming thing died this morning while my assistant was putting the boot in. Uh, <laughs> so you cannot believe how it's cheered the team so. You know, um, it's 
really, you know, puts a smile on the face. That it's, it's important. Do things like that. Say yes. Um, and, yeah, just the other day, we did get one, and it was from the wrong... They weren't expecting... They didn't plan to email me. But they emailed me when they were planning to email their friend or their partner, and it just had two words, the second of all, which was yes. Um, <laughs> Once you've made the money, once you've made the money, yes, once you've got the money and you everything, keep in contact. Make the contact meaningful. Don't stick us on your mad mailing list that just sends us all your bump and nonsense. Don't fall into the bump trap again. Just little emails, the old thank you card at the end of the project, all good. Invite us to stuff. We like being invited to places, so we get to check up on you and meet others as well. Um, just one little point note, we're not allowed to pay for invites, okay? We're not allowed to buy tickets or anything like that. Most of us are not. So perhaps not a good idea to in send a lovely letter saying, oh, thank you for all this, and we're having a lovely ball, and please come along. And then on the back is the form asking for £250 to fill it in. Well, I've just sent you a cheque for £20,000. You know, to be honest, most times we'll be like, no, sell the seat. But it's, you know... Be careful what you're sending out. And finally, reporting, last paragraph. Sorry. <laughs> um, don't miss your deadlines. It's the most simple thing, but don't miss the deadlines. Write it down, stick it in your outlook, in your book, tattoo it somewhere, whatever. Don't miss them. Um, you know, and when you do respond, are you fulfilling all the requirements on your reporting? Um, you know, the foundations, especially the livery companies, are pretty good. You know, we try to keep the reporting pretty small. You know, there's no point paying you to sit in an office filling out a report like some places will have you doing. But, you know, go back to your original offer letter. Flick through it. What do they want? Okay, boom, do it. Um, when you've done it, how about a quick email just saying, oh, I've sent it to you. You know, just double check, just in case it didn't get there, just in case someone forgot to put a stamp on it. Um, <laughs> And it does go wrong, you know. Um, I, I was going to sort of give you a whole list of examples of how things did go wrong, but Pauline will have me if I don't get off this stage soon. Um, so, but the main thing is, sometimes things go wrong. If it does go wrong, just put your hands up, get over it, and move on. Um, when it came to our last reporting round, you know, obviously I do the thing and... Up came this list, 10 charities that have not sent us a report. 10 charities with somewhere between 10 and 25,000 pound checks sitting there that are not being claimed. Um, I did a nice thing. I actually emailed them all and said, you know, emailed the CEO of each one of them and said, look, not seen anything. If you don't want it, fair enough. Just let me know. Um, and funnily enough, in most of the cases, it's... Um, the, their PAs that get back in touch with me like that, going, we'll sort it, I'll make sure he knows straight away, we'll get it to you. A few days later, these things come in, which is great. Um, there was one example. That didn't, it didn't work out like that. Um, the PA did get back in touch with me, and I was like, great. And then silence. Nothing came in. week went by, nothing happened, another week went by. So I sent another email, this time to the actual CEO, because now I had his email. Um, still nothing happened. And I was like, right, that's it. So I sent the final one saying, I accept, accept that you, know, you, you no longer want this, fine, and you know, we'll call it a day. And then I got this email back, which was you know, um, apologetic, no. Sincere, no. Um, it was, you know, we sent you this, but obviously it didn't arrive, and it, it was, it really essentially got my back up. And it's like, why? I didn't even have to tell you that you'd forgotten to get this money in, you know, um, to send us a report. Why be like that? And so what did I do? Yeah, I Googled him. Um, yeah, and he wasn't at a conference that day because he hasn't got his um, filters on Facebook. <laughs> sort your Facebook filters out. <coughs> he was playing Mahjong. 
And my apologies if there's anyone in this room who recognizes who I'm talking about. Um, but it's great, you know, it, it's great. Um, anyway, moving swiftly on, I'm going to leave you with a good, good story. Um, there is a way to dig yourself out of a hole. Um, and there's someone that, you know, made quite a few of these mistakes. Um, and basically, I wrote them because... Right, how shall I say, uh, whether to... <laughs> essentially, uh, they'd put an application into us. It had gone good. You know, we were like, yeah, this is really good. Just need a few more information, bits of information, some of your accounts. Send these through to us. They never turned up. Waited, 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 never turned up. So then I sent the letter. You know, I, at that time, I need an excuse to drop people. You know, you're all good, but you're not all going to get through. So I sent the letter of saying, you know, the meeting happened, and because we didn't have all your information, we just took it on face value, you didn't get through, sorry. And then I got this letter. Um, I'd written to the headmaster of this particular foundation school, um, and I got a letter from his secretary copying in said headmaster. Um, thank you for the letter, um, and please accept my profuse apologies for the postage, postage error, which failed to forward a set of our most recent accounts to you. I must take full responsibility for the enclose. Uh, for, I must take full. I must. Uh, excuse me. Been talking too long. I must take fully with the responsibility, and enclose a check to cover the postage fine and any inconvenience to you. And there is said check drawn on her personal account. Well, actually, her husband's account <laughs> for twenty-five pounds. Um, and, you know, she, whilst I appreciate your criteria to wait a further year, please reconsider in support of this request. Um, you know, I'm very sorry. I'm a, as a mother of a previous Morehouse student, oh, there you go, uh, student which, with speech and language difficulties, yeah, but a lovely, crafted, personal letter. You know, you'd have to have a heart of stone to cash that check. Um, <laughs> but put them through. So I wrote back to him and said, well, thank you for that. I'm not sending your check back because I'm going to show it to everyone at this conference. <laughs> and um, we're going to put you back in. And you know what? A week ago, um, actually two days ago, I just wrote to her saying that she'd been successful and we're preparing to send her a grant for £5,000. So, you know, it's possible to dig yourself out. <coughs> if you treat me like a real person, you craft your letters well and your words well, don't treat us like you know, some sausage factory. Uh, you know, you're real people, you're working for real people, and I'm a real person, so, you know, perhaps it can work out if we just stick to those sort of principles. But thank you for your time. <laughs>